I'm Stacey J and this is my studio and this is my monthly make. My monthly make today, this month, is the Claude Pants from Stylark. We have gone through, we have done a sizing alterations and we have cut up our pattern. I've actually turned mine into something that was on a slab. Um, I will cut in here and put in a secondary alteration I've done for the bagginess of the crutch. Okay, so I will put that in now. So here I am in my little red shorts. I've got some photos I'll pop in, so I'll just move over here. I've got that baggy, crutchy thing going on here. So I'm going to alter the pattern a little bit and take it and scoop it in. It was one of the last diagrams I showed you, and I think it is, it's not tied on my bottom, but it looks like it's pulling under. So I'm going to release the bottom crutch so it gives me more in the crutch that just I, I did two uh, taking from the crutch in and I'm going to release the last one back out okay but I definitely think I need to go in this area here because it goes in like that much so I'm going to scoop that in okay and cut that bit out right apart from that I'm pretty happy with it and um, the sway backs come in nicely in my spine Okay, it sits level, okay, with the front. Doesn't sit up anymore. Um, yes, it's sort of a bit there. I'm, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to scoop out there, let that one out, and then I'm going to cut my pattern out in a mini. I think I must go and buy that present. But, uh, yeah, this is the boot look. Don't worry about the pasty white legs. It is winter. There you go, the boot look. Okay, just quickly before I head off out, I'd like to do these alterations. Now, as you know, I said I took some fabric out of there and I took some fabric out of there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lengthen that back out. I believe I can fly. I think I still need the crutch depth to go through on me. So I'm just gonna undo the sellotape a little bit cautiously because I do not wanna rip my pattern. Okay, right. And then I'm just going to place that back there. So it's still giving me the crotch around depth, okay, which is important. Okay, so that's gone back out. But what I think I might do is take that in, that extra, um, That extra centimeter because I still need that fabric gone burger. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to take that away. So I need it to go under my bum that distance, but I need it out of my bum there. And I might do another split further along here. I think. I think. What do you guys think? You're saying I'm on, on this game by myself, aren't you? Because it pulled in there. No, I'm just going to... Mm, yeah, I'm going to leave it. It is meant to be a fuller leg anyway. I'm going to leave this. I've taken that back out. I've taken the crease out of there, which double shortened that height. I was happy with the sway back. That took it out of there too. That added a centimetre. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. Okay, jokey. I'm just gonna. I want to bump that up a centimetre, half a centimetre. My oh, bugger is there. It's stuck. She's stuck there. So I've let the crutch back out. Now I've just put a green background because I was um, told it was a little bit hard to see on the white, to which I apologise. Um, best cover for a deck table, especially if you trace, is a white background. I used to trace on my big dining room table many moons ago. Well, okay. About five years ago. <laughs> um, and... Um, I used to put white paper on it so I could trace. 
because I trace all my patterns because I fluctuate like a beast. Right, the other part we're doing is the front. Now stand by, I'm going to let that dog out. No, no, no. Mabel, get back on your bed and don't get in trouble with your sister. Okay, so remember I had this baggie here around the crutch. I'm going to let that dog out. No, quiet. Out. Mabel and Willow, you're a Absolutely naughty. Get inside the house. Vehicles are allowed to drive up the driveway. See, Willow gets you in trouble, Mabel. Willow, not happy. Bob, not happy. Right, back. Might cut all that dogness out. So the other thing is I had that um, fabric coming in there. So as I taught the other, the other day, the best way to do the mum tum in that. Now I'm all covered up here and my waist is covered as well. So so are you kidding? So we want to go in about one centimeter. Okay, so I'm gonna find my other ruler. Rules falling everywhere. So I just want to go in and out. Okay, so back out to here and just back out to there. Okay, and that will just take out that bit of flesh that was um, poofy there. So it's just got to dip in. So it's taking out room at my crutch because I don't have the need for that much room. I just want to take it up to that notch because that's where the zipper finishes. Which reminds me, after struggling to find a red zipper, <laughs> and then I shortened one anyway, um, I cut this out. See, if I needed more room here, I would have curved out the other way like I did and in, in instructed on the other day. Right, so that's taken out that flesh. Whew, right. Crazy. This is why it's easier had to have somebody standing here and me pointing out rather than trying to pin. So I am now, we've done that. So the next step I have, sorry guys, the next step I have to do is going to be the cutting out of my fabric. I will go and check to see if I've got a pink zip now and I think it is an 18 centimeter zip. Yes. And I'm going to think about these dogs. Right, yay. Next step, we're going to head into Mata 10 after I check about the zips. Right, so I've tried on my little red shorts with my little boots on. That was also on Friday Sews, but I wanted to add that into this so that we had it all compiled into one little zone. So what I have done to now today is I have done one other alteration on the front of my pattern. Okay, this is my this is my fabric. I might have shown you on Friday, but like I said, I want to collate it all in. I've done a little bit of a tuck out of um, a centimeter in the crutch to take out a little bit more of that filament that's going on. I still have it dipping in. And I have just done that. So at the moment, I am laying my fabric on. No, I'm laying my pattern on my fabric. And I will, as the sides aren't like identical, I'm picking this side to be my wrong side 
and I will be able to do my markings on all of that. Um, any questions? No questions at the minute? Okay. So I'm going to pin this all out and cut it out. And then let's get rolling. Now, I did not buy a zip. Um, I have some um, zippage. I have zips that are, oh, think of the word, continuous. There we go. Continuous zips. And I believe I'm going to just use one of them. I've got a three millimeter continuous zip. So I will use that. So we will get this laid out and we will talk about how to make them. Right, let's speed this little puppy up. Okay, just so you know, at the end up here, I haven't pinned them in properly. They uh, take it on the um ooh, take it on the right side of the fabric cut one of each so i haven't laid them out properly but that's where i'm going to take that from from that flesh up there got that all going on down there yeah so i'm going to cut this out easy can peasy lemon squeezy a little bit of a cluster gun on here right And don't forget when you are cutting out your one pieces that you make sure it's the right side of the fabric facing up. So right side of the fabric facing up. So if you were, so I had my right sides together. So that's why I flipped my fabric before I pinned it on. So they're all facing the right side up. I am now going to notch them all and then I'm going to put my interfacing on them. I don't know if you noticed that when I was cutting out, I always cut with the pattern to the back of my hand. Uh, when the blades come up, the blades angle that way. So the flat is there. And when they come together, it lifts the fabric up the least. So the moving of the fabric is not as bad. And then you also can get a nice long slice. Don't go to the, don't cut all the way through. Try and cut just to the, almost to the end, then ride forward. And then you have small, nice, smooth, actual fabric cuts. Um, there. Yep. So what I'm going to do now is go and find me some interfacing. And I'm going to face that and my back piece. And I'm going to cut the notches out. And then I shall be ready to sew. I'll go and find the pink continuous zip too, so that we can make it a real zip without the real, you know, tacky things. Alrighty then, let's get cracking. Are you ready to get started? I have ironed on my interfacing. I have marked the darts in my back, not my front. So I want you to iron on your interfacing, on your, on all your interfacing bits, which should be, and I'll read it out to you. It should be seven, six, four, five, three. Okay, so you fly facing. Your, um, your, what are they calling this piece here? Let me read it out, what they're calling it. 
the fly bearer that's the rectangle piece the fly piece the fly bearer fly facing and you've got your left uh left facing your right facing and your back facing they should all be covered with interfacing now what i tend to do because you got a left and a right facing is i normally just shove the pattern piece back on it just so i know there's notches and they should all match and all that sort of stuff just makes my life easier grabbing them so everything else all the other pattern pieces i just go and put in a nice pile so i don't lose them and then i blow fabric around and then they go on the floor anyway so <laughs> I want you to also mark your darts. Um, that is good. And what I like to do with my darts is I like to make, um, I like to draw from the top down to where the dart ends, pin it, and I've got something nice to guide me on my way up so my darts lines go nice and straight. Um, then I haven't done my front one. I left that for some unbeknownst reason to myself, but I did. And I will get back to you once I've done that. Actually, what I'll get you to do, the first thing I want to do is I want to overlock my seam here. Okay, so my fly seam, because that's the one we we're going to do some work with to add the fly into it. Right, I'm going to unpick it, mark my darts, and then I'm going to un overlock my crutch seam. And then I'll get back to you. Okay, so if you haven't already, I've just marked my darts. Um, go to the overlocker and overlock your front crutch all the way up from there to there. I've got to change overlocking thread. I do not want red overlocking thread. I'm thinking I might put a pretty pink, a pink that might match the edge of my selvage. Thinking, thinking. Ooh, that pink looks like it could. There's another one of them. Yeah. Not too bad. It's a bit pinker, but I don't know if I got the pink that's in between those. This might be. Stand by call on this peeling it. Oh, hi. What do you reckon? I think that's the, the winner. Get my paley pinks back. And I've got four of those. One can go on the side machine. And the others can go on the overlocker. One, two, three, four. Oh, there's a bobbin. What's that doing sitting there? Yellow bobbin. Right. I'll spit this. And get my overlock uh, pinked out. And then I will also fill a bobbin up with this because there is top stitching. And I think this will be a nice pink that pops out. I've literally, literally, I think I've just seen a fabric that would make a nice, nice one of these. For my pants I've made one before with you guys and I didn't really like it I have it but I don't think I wear it very much I don't like the facing inside it it just sort of made it I don't know I just didn't really like it but the lady who is on perfect jackets yep I believe it's perfect jackets she makes them all the time and she beads them like like a demon perfect jackets is who she's with she also makes pancake dresses i think that's what they call mum loves them um it's making a tiered dress without making a tiered dress this is a forcier to come off forcienda oh come on okay so i'm gonna leave you to it um overlock the crutch i'm gonna change my overlocking thread and and overlock my crutch not my actual crutch but yeah and i will get back to you very very soon I literally seconds okay so i've overlocked the pink looks really good i think i think it's i think pink nice done 
and now what I'm doing is just grabbing the tops where it's um, been uh, snipped get my pin stick it through the two of the line that I drew take it down about midway when you stick the pin in make sure it's coming back through your line and then down to the bottom okay so again now I've marked on the wrong side so it's easy to fold it and you still get to see the lines and okay I'll do the other one and then what we're going to do is we're going to stitch our darts now a lot of people a lot of people say don't do this don't do that with darts you know I just I just make sure they come to a point at the end and usually off the um, fabric um, I thought that was something on my fabric but it's not it's there for good forever not coming out unless I really wreck it um, I you can go all the way down the end instead of snipping off or you can pull it out a bit um, get the strings and tie knots in it that is one way to finish off your dart but I always like to go over a few stitches over the tip I always do it like this it's just the way I do it not saying it's the right way just my way I just wing it I just don't like there to be a gap at the bottom if there's a gap at the bottom it tends to pucker and nobody wants that going on okay the last one is coming up now oh the do dogs have just opened that door sent in a rush of chill and here we go okay i'm gonna go and sew my darts i don't think you need to see me do that if you guys do i can sew some darts and show you how i do them in another way okay i'm just gonna do my darts with my pink and then we're gonna iron it facing the side seams and then we're gonna top stitch it i'll bring you to the sewing machine go on then right nice and close and so i won't put that in front of it if i'm going nice and close Pull that one back, put it under, right up there at the top, got a nice, um, my needle, my, my stitch length is on two and a half. I was just making sure the um, bobbin had come up. Okay, the end is there, the end is nigh. Okay, and this is where I just go off. And it comes right to a flat, okay? It's no pucker out. So I'm gonna do the other ones. Roll it off again nice and they are going to actually face towards the back and then we're going to top stitch down or edge stitch down on the folded side the other one through oh that one's when I twisted it the other way there and the last one 
Now, I can't wait to overlock all of this because I know that it frays like a demon. So I am looking forward. And I know that some of the seams actually are overlocked together because I did that mock-up. All the way down here. And will I want some? Okay. And then I'll go and side seam, line them and side seam them, and then we'll come back and top stitch. I'll be back. Right, done my ironing. Oh, sorry. And this is what it looks like at the minute. Sits so nice, sits so flat. There's no holes down the bottom. There's no gaping going on. There is, however, a crooked. I'll be back. I'll repress that. Let's go with this one. Am I right with that one? Yeah, I'm right with that one. So no, no bubbles at the bottom. Okay, and that's what happens if you don't quite go down far enough. And I'll do a edge stitch on this. And I'll do it now while I've got you on the line. And you want to just sew. I'm going to line up my, my foot with the actual dart. Nice little pink stitch going on down there. And this one as well. My hands aren't pushing, pulling or nothing. Okay, they are just sitting here helping the fabric go underneath the needle. And there's my other little dart. Pretty. Pretty and pink. You're an 80s kid if you know that one. Now, as I said, the fraying of this fabric is rather, hmm, happens. So I'm going to, because the next step we're up to is um, number three, and it says with right sides facing, sew the side seams at the front and back waist facings together and press open. Now I know it tucks inside the waistband um, or the waist facings and you can't see it. And normally you don't do it because you don't want there to be a bulk in this particular area. But at the end of the day, this is what happens to our fabric. So let's not have a hole in our pants after three washes and um, let's overlock the edges. So if you've got a fabric that frays a lot, let's go and overlock that those edges. Then we're going to come back and I'll place my fabrics on so I know which side of the waist my fabric's going because this is where it's the right and left hand side okay and it goes inside you so you basically want it that way to know which side the good thing with the diagram if you can find the diagram because it doesn't line up with the numbers which is okay um, because it's not rocket science but um i actually forgot to write oh keep bumping you guys I've got to write what side what was on, and I don't have an erasable pen here. Um, four is the. Four is the. <laughs> I didn't even write the pattern number on there. That is so naughty of me. Oh, Stacy Joanne, you're so naughty. Okay, so. I'm going to go and overlock each side of this and each side of this. Okie dokie. Lemon pokey. I think I will also overlock that. Only down the curved end. Okay. Because again, like I said, it's going to go inside and be sewn around. But I still don't want that fraying. Right. Back in a jiff. Our next step is with right sides together and I've just gone and put my pink on there, is to sew my side seams together. Okay, so this should be three, five, and four. Okay, right sides together. Don't forget we have a one centimeter seam allowance in this part of our... Okay, I'm having a little bit of... Um, Bajiggeriness with this 
and I'm going to fix it because it's bajiggering me. Okay, so right sides together. Our seam allowance is one centimetre. I hope. That's the style arc. They're usually one centimetre. I shouldn't assume, should I? Mm, you know what? I assume it does. All right, so one centimetre seam allowance. Make sure that you've got the right um, stitch length that you want. You should be matching in notches. And so down. What is one centimetre? Is that? That's not a quarter inch, because a quarter inch is... Is it three quarter? I don't know what one centimetre is. In. Right, so we've got that. I need to go and open my seams. And then, actually, before I open my seams, why well, get up 50 times, right? So I want it upside down. That's number three. That's five. That's four. We want to sew the curved part of the curved part of the fly to number four and when we press this we're going to press it towards number four okay we will not be opening the seam up it will be one seam in okay so that will be pressed towards the four this will be split open open i'll be back What we want to do now is we want to understitch it so that it is sewn down and that the seam will stay in there. I'm not 100% sure this part is required, but it's understitched now. Right, the next step we want to do is we want to go and let's do the... We're up to number five. With right sides together, sew the fly to the right of the, of the front crutch Turn to the right side and understitch on the side of the fly. So we're going to stick, see this is together. And then they're not. I know how I would do it. I'm just trying to read it like they have written it. Now with right sides together, you find your right hand piece. Okay. And you're going to put right sides together. And the fly is going to be attached with right sides together. Did I say right sides together enough? <laughs> I'm going to sew it down all the way. Okay, and that will sew and fold nicely there, which will go back and be sewn there. Okay, I'm just going to check one thing. I'll be back. Right, I just wanted to double check that it was one centimetre seam allowance. And it is. Right, so we're sewing the fly face facing to the right-hand side. 
of the front panel, front leg, front. The next step we're going to do is we're going to sew the right and the, um, the front and the back together. And set aside. Sounds like I'm doing a recipe. Okay, that will go back there, which will eventually fold under there and be little pink stitching around there so I'm going to go and I'm going to stitch that down I am so while I'm here I'm going to top stitch it because I can just give it a nice little tug in the general direction I'm just going to flip it the other way. I didn't think that was Stacy. Stacy. Right down, just under stitch it. So make sure all your seams are coming to. Oi, girls. Am I recording? Yeah. Mabel and, and what's your name? Willow. Okay, so I'm just giving it a little pull to separate it. As I get up down to the um, the iron, okay, and that will just tuck under beautifully, like get rid of that. This. It's so about now. You might want to go if you've got a label you want to put on it. Okay, put your label in the middle of your front, off your back, off your front. Okay, and that will just come around and that will be so on eventually like a fly. There. Just like that. What magic. Okay, so now I'm going to press it. <laughs> and, yeah, I'm going to see if I can arrange my tables a bit differently. I'm climbing in and out. It's a bit hard. Okay, with your right sides, front and back, with right sides facing, I'd like you to sew up the crutch seam what i will do first though as well i've got this here is i'm just going to sew my label on i like to do that with a bigger stitch like a almost like i'm top stitching it on and right on the edge living on the edge Now I'll be, um, which I should do real soon, is overlocking the edge of that because I want it not to fray. Fray nut. Okay, I'm just moving my size of my stitch so that it gets right to the edge. This is actually a bigger label than what, oops, than what it's here, measured here, because I, um, I folded the edges down because it was going to run over. Okay, so what I'm doing is sewing the middle um, down the center seam, okay, where underneath the crutch, Right there, where it meet, reaches the uh, um, where the front and the leg uh, back meet under the crutch. Then I'm going to go and overlock it together and press it towards the back. Now I'm only doing it with the right hand side at the minute. Then I'm going to put the right hand side away and get onto, ah, 
Why didn't somebody tell me that I hadn't shrunken my stitches? Nobody wants my inner thighs popping out. I'm just going to go over that and be precise. <laughs> so I can open my seam. Which, if I was being precise with my one centimeter seam allowance, it'd be easy. Nice big bulky seam. Thank goodness I don't have to open it. Another seam you could do is a Hong Kong seam. Hong Kong, I love, they're just so classy. I love Hong Kong seams in products that don't have the lining. It just takes the, um, the overlocking rawness away. Okay, right there is where my notch is. So I'm gonna sew down straight to the notch and lift and turn a little bit because that's where the cuff comes into it and it goes under. All right, so I'm going to open that up and push it towards the back and um, overlock it. I'll overlock it first. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, the next part is get your bearer. This is my top the right sides together so let me read what it says <sighs> with the right sides together fold the flyer bearer in half and sew across the top edge clip corners and turn out to the right side just make sure you got the top but the only reason it's going to be the top is your notches, you know, for the front uh, the front of the pant. Because I iron this so crisply in half <laughs> that it's not playing with me. Well, it is playing with me. Playing with my head. Can't line it up. Right. So, here we go. No markings other than the one centimeter seam allowance, so I am going to do a one centimeter seam allowance. Actually, um, well, let's get that back up. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to flatten it. I'm not flat because that beautiful crease I put. I'm going to be playing up for me. That's better. Right. I've got two notches there together. Right. Nicely under there, one centimeter. Oh, and I've made my pink zip too, so yay. Okay, and the idea is to clip the corners. Now it's allowed to take that seam on. Perfect. Okay, so that's all nice and tight. Just flipped it over with my fingernail in there. You can use one of your turners. This is a really good little turner. It's also got a little bit of humpy jumpy. Or actually you can also um, put that under when you're sewing buttons. Keep it off if you want to need, need a shaft button. Okay, and then what you want to do is neaten down the side and neaten across the bottom. Right. Now let me double check. I'll read it to you. Turn out. Neaten along the side and the base of the bearer with your overlocker or serger. With right sides together, so the left edge of the zip tape between the notches. This is... I'll do my overlocking and come back with my um, zipper. Okay, so next stage is we're going to sew the zipper down. Now, because I've got a continuous zipper, which it seems I've got a big part of it, I'm just going to sew nicely on the edge. And I've tucked that over. That will be hidden in behind when it is attached to the 
um, other part, <laughs> the front. And just lift the foot up out of the way when you want to slide it up so there's no bubble in your in your thingy in your zip when you're sewing near it okay so now that we've done that we're going to sandwich it into the left hand side of the Yep, no, I've done it right. Okay. Whew, I thought I'd stuffed it up. Okay, but what we want to do is obviously we want to fold back. Because what we're going to do, now this is where my little brain was a bit, I don't know why, but it was, and it is, and it's going to be, again, I can tell. Right, if I was my left front here, I'm going to read out to you what it says to do. Right, we've got our little overlocked crutch part. Right, and it's going to sort of be sandwiched like that. And it goes half a centimetre down because that's what our waistband sews on. And you want to sandwich it between. You don't, you don't fold it right sides together and do that. Okay, you want to sandwich it between. So what you want to do is actually line up and it's going to go nice and close to that but what gets me is it not at any time has it asked you to fold that back so what we're going to do is we're going to iron back one centimeter so that it makes it nice and easier for us to be able to sit it on top get our this is when we want the zipper foot because we want it really nice and close okay nice and close like that and we're going to stitch all the way down to the bottom of the bearer okay so in the meantime these are stitched between the notches fold that back one centimeter and You girls aren't very helpful. No. No. Okay, so now I'm just going to change the foot of my machine to my trusty um, zipper foot. And once that's on, I'm going to sew from the bottom up. I've left, um, as I took out some um, a centimetre from my crutch depth, um, I have it a little bit longer than than planned, but that doesn't matter. I've made sure it's maintained down the centimetre, even though it lines it up, but don't line it up because if you line it up, you're going to see what happens next. Okay, so I'm just putting over there. It's nicely wedged. I want to make sure I get as close as I can to the zip, okay? Because that is the height of importance. Because we want to be able to do exactly that. I'm just going to pull my zip up a little bit. And I'm just sort of squishing them in together. Lift my foot up. If I can't get it, I usually turn my foot around and then it sort of gives me that little that little nudge I can get it through. Keep it nice and tidy. This of course the stitch will be hidden when the fly wraps over on top of the the side now as you know i have obviously a very long zip and i've curled it under and i will trim it after i've done this and this 
will stop it from going into the other end side. So I can, if I wanted to now, take this and trim off my zipper. Go on, burger. All right. So now when I zip up, it's only going to go to there. I've already put a little stopper at the bottom. Okay, so that's sitting there nice and neat. It looks really, really tidy. Now we need the other front. Okay, so we're going to grab the other front. Front, front, where are you? There you are. This one, don't forget, is attached to the back. I haven't attached this one to the back. Actually, I might attach the to the back now. I won't need to change my feet. Feet. Um, tastes like feet. And we'll put those together. And that's the one centimeter seam allowance. That is part of the blunt crotch side seam. Okay, and that's so it sits nicely. There's my two notches. Match them up. Oop. Quickly double check, I've got both wrong sides out. Wrong and wrong, yep. And I want it to come to the bottom where that notch is. That's where I do my spin a little bit, my pivot. Okay, that's two Ross sayings I've said in the last however many minutes, seconds, milliseconds. Okay, I will use my, uh, I'm going to use my, <laughs> I'm going to use my um, zipper foot. Don't be bothered changing it. You're with me, aren't you guys? You're with me. The changing of the zipper foot. So I'll put these two together. Nice and married up on the sides. forget manipulate the fabric don't let the fabric manipulate you i haven't said it this time i thought i'd better throw it in there in case you're new to me and that you've never heard me say that before pivot at the notch that's right there. One more. Just a little pivot. Okay, I'll go and overlock that and come back with a press. Next set of instructions say, stitch the zip to the fly fa facing, which is your round curved one, not the bearer that we just popped in, starting from the notch marked on the pattern and approximately two centimeters in from the seam edge. Be sure to keep the bearer out of the way. So our notch, our notch, right, righty, right, right, ah. Uh, got a zip here. Got our under leg seams here. Okay, so we are working with this. So at the end of the day, we want that to be opened. That be behind that. And that's sitting approximately there. Okay, so what we're doing now is making sure they're together. That's in there. 
First of all, what we're going to do is we're going to get the seam edge here. I've got my trusty erasable pink pen. I think at the minute it's better than the white one, which is which one I would normally use if I was. So there's my seam, my fold. Come in two centimetres. centimeters is not quite an inch seven eighths of an inch I don't even know why I try because I actually have no idea I do oh, ha. <laughs> lots going on people I'm gonna take this one and put it down here I need that one in a second right this is the buttersaurus side of that one and two okay I'm just gonna rule up here Okay. Mm. Okay, and down here. You might not be able to see that, but I can. So I just ruled that two centimeter line. And what I want to do next is, here's the top of my waistband. There it is there. So that's pretty much what I want to do. And I want to have that there. Don't I? Yes. So that's going to come out here and be there. So I'm going to unzip. I'm going to pin the bear out the way. Put it there. Unzip it. I like to make sure I line it all up. I'm lined up there. At the bottom. And that should go there like that. So there's my two centimeter edge. There's the edge I want. I want nothing pinned in behind it, but it, it itself. You definitely do not want to catch the bearer in because that will just trap everything. And of course, it's always best to pin on a flat surface. This thing, this thing is just, I don't know why it's attached already. Okay, that I think Deb, um, from DB Designs was like, what on earth as well. It's just unusual. Not unusual to be loved by anyone. Okay, so that should be the end of it there. Should be there. I'm just going to put that little mark there. And make sure I'm still on the pink line. Me crying, I wanna die. So I'm just gonna put that there. Then I'm gonna flick it under like that. Flick this leg over. Okay, and because that's gonna be on top. 
the spear is being pinned back back. I'll just unpin that for a second and put that under there and that will sit like that. Hiding the pink there, the zips will be there touching and there is your fly. Hmm. Right, we have it here attached to the, pinned it to the fly facing. Um, I, I, I know I'm doing it like this, but I would never teach anyone to add a fly like this. So now what we want to do is we want to separate the facing away from everything else you want to go down i like to do two stitches down here it just gives it a nice reinforcement and stitch down the edge and that's when we want to make sure it's sitting on that two centimeter um squimmy two centimeter line Make sure the bearer is well away from it. You do not want to catch that up in it. It'll be even more frustratingly flyish as it already is. And right down to the bottom. Okay, and now I'm going to come up. Willow, please don't. I'm getting sick of you guys barking when I'm trying to record. Okay, now make sure still the bear is away. And just sew it there. Really hoping Willow doesn't bark again. And then it says to tuck it back in and around so that goes under we got a little bit here and it says it does say this it says to sew up the fly so you got the two things here that goes over the top like that sits beautifully this is where your little hook will be okay And the problem is, is if you sew up and around the fly now, right, you sew that all up, when you've got to attach this, you can't attach that. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to not do that because I'm not happy with that entire part of this at all, whatsoever. Not happy, Bob, not happy. Okay, so, I mean, when I did it, I kept the bearer out of the way, and I sewed only part of the way around, okay, so I went down and around and did part of it, but instead, when we're not going to do that at all, so I'm going, we're not going to do it, we're going to do it later. Yeah, it might be more fiddly, but it's better than having to unpick something so that you can, yeah. So, with bear is still out the way, return to the right side, the right side in its place, and top stitch around the right fly. No, not gonna. Right, return the bearer in its place, and from the inside, stitch the bearer to the curve of the fly. Still not doing that. So, we're going to come back to 14 and 15. Let's do this. Oh, excuse me. All right. Neat in the back crotch seam with an overlocker or surgeon with right sides facing. Sew the back crotch seam together. Start sewing at the X. 
marking at the waist which is there and stitch at waist and stitch down the to the crotch finishing in the line with the front crotch seam so it's still got a hole in the front crotch which is yet another thing that dazzles me right so basically we are meeting here so even though we could go across to here we're not going across to there oh so at the end of it we want to sort of marry it up here but so now what we're going to do is we're going to put our bottoms together how many bottoms do you have, Stacey? Right, and you know me and my junctions, I like to pin my junctions and so over my pins at a very slow pace because that way my seams will be together. I didn't even iron this one. I'm going to go and iron this. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Put them in together. Do the seam allowance. Through the seam allowance. I think I've talked about this before. When you go to a shop such as Kmart or whatever, yeah, you know, your lower end shops are and you have a look at under their arms and you find that their seams don't match okay that's because they don't care so why we're not going to the front is for some reason but where we want to start is right in here a centimeter there okay and you've got your two two um Notches there. Oh, yep, let's change foot. We might have to change back later, but I'm all good with that. centimeter it's like right on the one centimeter which is awesome that's what it's meant to be and make sure our notches are together and they are down here yep done nicely together Okay, remember it just says to go to the seam of the, to the front crotch. So not over and in, we just go right to the seam. There's a few things, and now I don't mind a, a style like pattern. Don't mind it. But this one, I can see why I would have been asked to, um, do a style on. Okay, I'm just going to read some stuff to figure out. Why we're not sewing it to there. Right, no, I'm going all the way to the seam, the crotch seam. 
it says to the crutch seam and that's where the crutch seam is is up there so keep on rolling kids go all the way don't catch anything as in like cloth not a coal yeah well I'll stick with that one okay all the way up and what we want to do is we want to come up just beside that so that's where it's all joining Stitches are there, connected. Oh, good pink through. I don't know what that is. Right. Sits there nicely. Top rolls over. And up. Okay, that's perfect. Right. Now it's telling me that I am to, with right sides facing, sit side seams together. That's when you wangle the get up there. And get it there but what I'm going to do first let's get rid of that I don't know if I can unpack it from there and just add it afterwards so annoying so annoying you know what it's so annoying oh, so that goes there so that goes there mm -hmm. right I'm going to overlock the side seams first and then I'm going to come back and we're going to stitch them together I'm going to turn it in the right way and get on with this waistband and I know I know that it is going to be bulkier for you to do your entire um, fly facing and top stitching it, but, 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 but of course, it's just not in. Right now with the right sides together, everything's pink overlocked and right sides together here's one of my main parts and here's the other i'll just show that up zip that up and i will get rid of this thing and So down my leg. You know what is missing in these pants? Pockets. Just saying, this would be good. Let's get we've got one centimeter seam allowance. Coming down. But I guess. Mm. Yeah, I guess is all I'm going to finish that off with. You can hear the tick 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 of Willow's claws, can't you? I don't know what that little dance was, but. Oh, she's chasing something. Or her ball. Now these seams I will have opened. And they'll look nice down the side. want to see um Stylark usually do a s instructions on your pattern I think there's a yeah there's a tutorial there okay 
in case you um, don't get what I'm saying or don't understand my madness. And So the next part we'd have to overlock would be the um, cuffs. So we can turn them up, use the blind hem up, boom, done. Now, this side seam. girls have been bothered all day and been bothering me all day which in turn if there's barking on the tv your dogs will be bothered too <laughs> i um was watching something the other day it was something of mine now i don't normally watch me but i was watching something for some reason i cannot remember why and um Willow had barked in this particular vlog. And well, of course, that just set off, eh? Obviously doesn't even know her own voice. Okay, I'm going to go and press them open and I'll come back and let's tackle this waistband. Okay, so I've already pinned the waistband. Okay, make sure your V's are there. They're matching together, your fronts, and you take the fly back. See, this is why I don't know how they do it. I'm lost. So I'm going to sew it and if this doesn't turn out, I'm going to delete this particular one. And it is only half a centimetre seam allowance around this one, which is the width of my foot. Off I go. So that was the fly part. <laughs> Should I do it in a big stitch in case I have to unpick it? This particular fabric is really quite nasty, not nasty to sew. Your notches in the waistband should marry up nicely with your um, with your darts and your seam allowances should be right on your seam allowances. Okay, so we don't go down, we just sew in. Okay, there is actually a notch there, but 
you're meant to sew that too. Pre-sign my um glasses I'm currently wearing are my new blue ones and they altered the length of the arm the other day. They made it too short, so they actually opened it up. And um it's pushing back in the back of my head, which is not very comfortable. I could go upstairs and grab myself my other glasses, but I'm not gonna. Nah, I'm not gonna. Right, so I've come along all the way along. I'm coming to the end where the um, fly bearer is now. And I am going to. Oh. Yeah, it's frayed quite a lot, eh, since I cut it out. It has a bit, because it's quite an open weave, it's got a bit of a stretch in places too, which is bit naughty. Okay, so I'm going to have a look at this, and if it's right, I'll turn you back on. Okay, so why they don't get you to go down and do your diamond is because you want to, you've got to um, understitch all the way around. Okay, so understitch so that it keeps it rolled to the back side of it underneath the facing side so make sure that your seam allowance has been pressed up into your facing and then go around and top stitch it not top stitch under stitch it all Ooh. that was vista print i have new business cards coming out with the old and with the new totally new design and everything i have had the other ones for a good part of 10 years, 11 years. So, so I'm just changing up. I'm changing, it's changing. Okay, that's one side. And now to the other side. Start at the V with the notches. Look at all these little daggy strings coming out because it was fraying. Now this one you're going to get right into as far as you can because it's obviously side sealed off as well. You can, if you wanted to, um, do a button instead of your hook and eye. If you prefer to do a buttonhole and a button. To keep it naked at the front, I would do my buttonhole in the back and put my button there on top of my zipper. That's if I was doing it. All right, now what we want to do is we want to get our V. And so one centimeter down. If I got those notching notches right. Okay, and down to one.
cool and perfect. Up to the other side, one centimeter seam allowance. Make sure you're doing the one centimeter seam allowance. Okay, so now with that being like that, we know that we cannot turn it because it doesn't turn nicely like that. So we need our trusty awesome scissors. Trim that down to the V as much to the V as we can without slicing through the fabric. Remember, it's if it's if you're using a um, fraying fabric as well, be careful. Trim off there because we want to make it nice and thin. Flip it in. Flip it in. Ta-da! Here's our V. Okay, so if I'm going to go and press that, I'm going to press up my hem. I'm going to go to my blind hemmer and I'm going to blind hem it. I have grey in the blind hemmer and I think that'll be fine for these. So I am turning up the hem. I'm going to have to measure it. Yeah. Oh, it says here, um, button or buttonhole. Depends on you. What what do you feel like doing? But like I said, if I was definitely if I was doing that, I would definitely have the oh hang on, I've got to finish that off. I would definitely have the um, buttonhole on the underside on the the fly bearer. Okay, right now. Oh, hang on. No, no, we've got huge thing. Why don't you guys remind me? <laughs> Sorry, my bad. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to go around the fly. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're up to that stage now. So open your fly up. Actually, keep your fly closed. Take your bearer. And it shouldn't be at all whatsoever sewn to the other side. This is why it is better to do it with um, to do it with no back on it because it lays flatter. So I'm just going to put my hand in there and manipulate the bajingas out of it. Okay, and fold the beer back. Actually, I'm just going to before I do that, I'm going to. Leave the bearer there like that. That's going to shut there like that. Okay, and I am going to get... Got it here, don't worry. I want the fly, though. The fly is nowhere to be seen. Oh, my pattern's falling to pieces. Okay, there should be a fly somewhere in here. Oh, where is it? Okay, I'm going to have to free ball this. I wasn't keen to do that, but... No. I'm just charging something that helps me turn you guys on and off recording. Okay, right. I looked at it today thinking, I wonder when that's going to go flat. Today. Today's the day it's going to go flat. So, I've got right out to here. This is where the actual fly is. This is not working. Yes, it is now. Okay, so we want to come down. We don't want to catch the bearer, but we want to come down. Now, don't forget, if you don't have a continuous sip like me, if you don't have a continuous sip like me, you need to make sure you don't hit over the metal bar. Okay, so I'm going to come around.
and draw my straight line, which will be about, okay, now if I just pull that out a bit, it makes the fabric straight. And I will check that that is the same width there, which is three and the same width up here. Which is three. Perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to sew around it. Okay, but of course I want the bearer gone. So the bearer is not attached at all to the fly facing yet. And we're going to curve that up later. So I'm just pulling this one out of the way. So we don't want it to touch. And then I'm going to lay it as flat as I can. Put some nice pins in it. Okay, so why they don't get you to go down and do your diamond is because you want to, you've got to um, understitch all the way around. Okay, so understitch so that it keeps it rolled to the back side of it, underneath the facing side. So make sure that your seam allowance has been pressed up into your facing and then go around and top stitch it, not top stitch, under stitch it all. Ooh, that was Vista Print. I have new business cards coming. Out with the old, in with the new, totally new design and everything. I had the other ones for a good part of 10 years, 11 years. So, so I'm just changing up. I'm changing, it's changing. Okay, that's one side. And now to the other side. Start at the V with the notches. Look at all these little daggy strings coming out because it was fraying. Now this one you're going to get right into as far as you can because it's obviously side sealed off as well. You can, if you wanted to, um, do a button instead of your hook and eye. If you prefer to do a buttonhole and a button. To keep it naked at the front, I would do my buttonhole in the back and put my button there on top of my zipper. That's if I was doing it. All right, now what we want to do is we want to get our V. And so one centimeter down. If I got those notching notches right. Okay, and down to one. and pivot 
up to the other side, one centimeter seam allowance. Make sure you're doing the one centimeter seam allowance. Okay, so now with that being like that, we know that we cannot turn it because it doesn't turn nicely like that. So we need our trusty awesome scissors. Trim that down to the V as much to the V as we can without slicing through the fabric. Remember, it's if it's if you're using a um, fraying fabric as well, be careful. Trim off there because we want to make it nice and thin. Flip it in. Flip it in. Ta-da! Here's our V. Okay, so if I'm going to go and press that, I'm going to press up my hem. I'm going to go to my blind hemmer and I'm going to blind hem it. I have grey in the blind hemmer and I think that'll be fine for these. So I am turning up the hem. I'm going to have to measure it. Yeah. Oh, it says here, um, button or buttonhole. Depends on you. What what do you feel like doing? But like I said, if I was definitely if I was doing that, I would definitely have the oh hang on, I've got to finish that off. I would definitely have the um, buttonhole on the underside on the the fly bearer. Okay, right now. Oh, hang on. No, no, we've got huge thing. Why don't you guys remind me? <laughs> Sorry, my bad. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to go around the fly. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're up to that stage now. So open your fly up. Actually, keep your fly closed. Take your bearer. And it shouldn't be at all whatsoever sewn to the other side. This is why it is better to do it with um, to do it with no back on it because it lays flatter. So I'm just going to put my hand in there and manipulate the bajingas out of it. Okay, and fold the beer back. Actually, I'm just going to before I do that, I'm going to. Leave the bearer there like that. That's going to shut there like that. Okay, and I am going to get... Cut it here, don't worry. I want the fly, though. The fly is nowhere to be seen. Oh, my pattern's falling to pieces. Okay, there should be a fly somewhere in here. Oh, where is it? Okay, I'm going to have to free ball this. I wasn't keen to do that, but... No. I'm just charging something that helps me turn you guys on and off recording. Okay, right. I looked at it today thinking, I wonder when that's going to go flat. Today. Today's the day it's going to go flat. So, I've got right out to here. This is where the actual fly is. This is not working. Yes, it is now. Okay, so we want to come down. We don't want to catch the bearer, but we want to come down. Now, don't forget, if you don't have a continuous sip like me, if you don't have a continuous sip like me, you need to make sure you don't hit over the metal bar. Okay, so I'm going to come around. Until 
my straight line, which will be about, okay, now if I just pull that out a bit, it makes the fabric straight. And I will check that that is the same width there, which is three, and the same width up here. Which is three. Perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to sew around it, okay? But, of course, I want the bearer gone. So the bearer is not attached at all to the fly facing yet. And we're going to curve that up later. So I'm just pulling this one out of the way. So we don't want it to touch. And then I'm going to lay it as flat as I can. Put some nice pins in it. Right. Under there, remember, flat as you can. Get rid of any awkward stuff that you've got laying around. Okay, I'm really talking to myself here because I've got a lot of stuff laying around. Put that over the top. Much, much easier when you just have the two fronts together to do this. Okay, you want to make sure you do not get that bearer amongst it. Otherwise, it sort of locks it into a horrible place. Okay, I'm going down. You're going to make sure that you are catching the... Now, this is something that's on show, so don't feel you need to rush it. Now, once we've done that, we can zip it up. It still sits nice and flat. Get our bearer and our fly facings together. And just down the bottom, around the curve for a bit, attach them. And that should be that. So I'm going to put them on and show you. And oh, should I hem them first? I'll hem them first. Okay. Well, hi everyone. It's the end of a long day. I have semi-finished my pants. Why well, I say semi is I haven't decided what I'm having as my closure at the top. So I don't know if it's a buttonhole and a button. And what's the other thing I haven't done? That's it. Yeah, that's it. So I'm going to take you down. I'll actually um, drop you down here like this. I want to sort of get the gauge of where you guys land. How does that look? Right, so here's my pants. Okay, and remember how there was like lots of folds going on here? Well, there isn't now. Okay, so it's all, the fabric's disappeared. I did that one centimetre cut across. Yeah, all the way down the sides is good. And then on my back and my bottom, let me sort of see if I can flick you forward a bit. On my bottom, it's not pooling like there's, the pattern is obviously baggier in the thigh, okay, and it pencils in, but there is none of that that um, 
those creases at the side and it's not tucked under like I, I made it too small in the crutch seam got rid of that that's all sorted so I am pretty happy with the outcome of the alterations of the pants and this very wool kind of fabric still I keep going to put my hands in my pockets doesn't have pockets so there you go I've hemmed them already with my blind hemmer and so they're all done I am relatively impressed not impressed with the pattern instructions they were a nightmare very nightmarish and I think I've had words to you guys about it so um as long as you don't do the fly sewing over before anything else and you get the waistband on then you're fine you just have to um make sure that you do it looks like my hair's long but i just had it cut the other day and it was too short i think i've just been scratching my head yep and i do have a tad of a headache only because these things push into my head there so i will go and get those sorted out later because i do like those glasses and my pink ones so there you go i hope you like this so long um any questions please drop it down um yeah have fun um especially with that fly thing you can see debbie um designs australia i'll put it down um see what she says about them too she's recently made them and i think her whole thing was like what with that fly it's just confusing it's confusing for young players it's what it is okay and i don't mean 12 year olds i mean people that are fresh to sewing right so i'm going to head off now um mr christopher is on his way home i'm going to get changed quickly before my client comes and drops something off to me <laughs> don't need them walking down when i've got no pants on get my jeans back on and my boots okay guys thanks heaps for watching um please um i know it takes it takes a long time to do these so longs and i hope you appreciate them uh there won't be another so long a monthly make for a while i've got um quite a bit on my plate so i will step back from that at the minute um not many people are watching them though so um i'm not sure they'll be that missed but um yeah if there's any content you'd like me to do please drop it down in the comments please like please subscribe and I hope you had fun. Excellent. Um, I'll catch you guys later. See ya.